a lot of you have been asking me to do this video, so here you go. I'm going to run through Manchester United's squad and speak about whether I think Eric Ten Hag, if he came in and he was Manchester United's manager, who would he keep in that squad? Who would he sell from that squad? Who might be loaned out? Who's on the edge? I've spread it into four categories, and I'm going to run through every single player inside this squad and the people, the players, sorry, who are out on loan and whether or not I think they're going to have a future at Manchester United if Eric Ten Hag becomes boss. Because, as I said, it's something that a lot of you have asked for. So please, if you would, consider subscribing to United People's TV. Go down there, hit that subscribe button. But hit that, what is it, notification bell? That's exactly what it's called. Forgot the name of what it was there. You get a ping every time I go live. But look, let's dive straight into this one. As I said, here's a squad. Here's the, We're going to run through a tier list. Going to run through every single position and every player in said positions. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be an interesting one. And I'm sure there are going to be plenty that you probably disagree with. And where else to start apart from David De Gea? Now... I suppose you can kind of split this into two things, really, because I think while I would immediately put David De Gea on the keep list for Eric Ten Hag, I mean only for this summer, I would probably put De Gea more on the edge because if, they, if, you're, if you've watched enough of Ten Hag's football and you know how he's played at Ajax, Ten Hag uses that goalkeeper really as part of the build-up. You remember that Dean Henderson was linked with a loan move to Ajax before that fell through and he stayed at Manchester United. De Gea, I would firmly expect him to not be at Manchester United within two years if Eric Ten Hag becomes manager. So that, for me, is why I'm going to put him on the edge. I think he'll be kept this summer, but he's definitely on the edge in terms of his future. I think Dean Henderson, for the exact same reason... He'll stay at Manchester United, and I think he's got a future. I think that change will happen if Manchester United don't sign a new goalkeeper in the in in the meantime. Dean Henderson is somebody who it's naturally easier for him to play with the ball at his feet. Whether you like him or not, whether you think he's the best goalkeeper or not, it's simply the truth. He's better with the ball at his feet than David De Gea and playing that style of football, and that's how Ten Hag plays. So I'm definitely going. As I said, this is like overall in the long term as to whether or not I think they're going to be kept or sold. Just this, just this squad here that we've got, the players we've got, got at Manchester United at the moment. Tom Heaton, uh, I mean, again, on the edge, really? And Lee Grant, I mean, seriously. I've still, I still have no, no idea what Lee Grant is. Every time I mention him, I just get confused. Uh, Tom Heaton, on the edge, he might stay as Manchester United's third-choice goalkeeper. He might not. But that's what I'm going to put down for the goalkeepers. As I said... This is just as much of a list of who I think is going to be kept and sold this year. There's there's too many things. There's too many players at Manchester United that I would get rid of for it to all happen in one summer under Eric Ten Hag if he came in. So I'm splitting this out over a couple of years. And that's for me, is why I'm putting David De Gea and Tom Heaton both on the edge with probably Dean Henderson as a keeper that's being kept. Again, you might massively disagree with that. You let me know what you think. Let's move down to the, to the defenders, though, because there are a lot of talking points to run through in this video. Harry Maguire. I don't think he's got a future at Manchester United, not if Eric Ten Hag comes in. And I'll be honest, the way he's played this season, no matter who comes in, I question it. Harry Maguire is a very, very different player to Harry Maguire who plays for England, isn't he? What is the reason for that? I suppose maybe we'll never know. But we kind of know, we kind of do know. It's a, bit, it's a bit more comfortable inside that England setup. It works for him. And the armband is massively weighed on his arm. I just don't see, if, again, if we're looking towards Eric Ten Hag's style of play, he likes to play a higher line and therefore has the two centre-backs need pace so they can recover in the same way that Laporte and Stones can do that at City or Van Dijk and Konate can do that at, at Liverpool. And Ten Hag employs a similar system. So Maguire just does not fit and suit that. So again, I don't think that would happen this summer, but I'm thinking overall, if he comes in, he's gone within two years. Luke Shaw, I would put him on the edge. Luke Shaw is, Jesus, man. Luke Shaw, like Harry Maguire, was fantastic at the Euros for England, was in the team of the tournament, scored in the final. Just looks, looks a different player with England than he does at Manchester United. But last year, he was very good at Manchester United. But again, I'm going down to how comfortable these players are in possession-based build-up football. Luke Shaw, I can't do anything else apart from put him on the edge. I don't think he's going to be... Mm, not guaranteed to be sold in the same way I don't think that Lee, I think Lee Grant and Harry Maguire are, but I would definitely put Luke Shaw on the edge. Raphael Varane, the first starter that I would confidently put in that keep pile under Eric Ten Hag. He's somebody who has and easily can play in a defense that's playing a high line. He's got the pace to recover. He's got the experience. He's got the quality. He can play out from the back with the ball. 
And that's what this whole defense has to be built on. It's been our biggest weakness for a long time. And that's why so few of these defenders are really going to fit and suit that system. Eric Bailly, it depends on how, on what he wants to do. Because in my opinion, I'd probably put him on the keep pile. Simply because we're going to be getting rid of so many. I think he might get more opportunities. But I would probably realistically put Eric Bailly down on the, uh, on the edge. I don't know what's going on with Eric Bailly. It strikes me as he's going to leave Manchester United sooner on, on his own uh, decision. I, I don't think he's that happy at Manchester United, even though he signed that new contract. Again, I just can't see too much of it. If he wants to stay, I think Ten Hag will be happy to keep him, but I'm not sure whether he wants to. I think he might want to go and play regular first-team football. Victor Lindelof, you've got to put him on the edge. I think Victor Lindelof is a better centre-back than... Um, most people give him credit for. But again, in, for the same reasons I'm talking about why Harry Maguire didn't suit, Victor Lindorf won't suit this higher aggressive style. And Ten Hag won't be like Ralph Radnick. Won't be like, oh, you don't like that pressing system. I'll try other ones. He goes, no, fuck this. This is my system. You either play in it or you're gone. And Lindorf does not suit that style in playing a higher line and using pace to recover because it's just not a, part, a natural part of his game. So I've got to put, I have to put him on the edge. I tell you, this list is starting to get long already. And geez, we're not, we're not even high, anywhere near halfway through. Alex Tellez, I've got to put him on the edge. My God, there just are so few inside this Manchester United squad that I can say with any real confidence that they've got a future at this club under Eric Ten Hag. And I'll tell you what, that really is just, that sums it all up right now, Manchester United, doesn't it? Alex Tellez simply hasn't done enough since he came back. So it's since he came back, since he came back from injury, but since he joined Manchester United. We expected to get like a really top level, established, experienced left back. And I just don't think we've ever really got that. Uh, I'll put him on the edge if he can improve. Uh, Luke Shaw's on the edge and Alex Tellers are on the edge. I think if they can both improve, they can both go back up to keep. But I think at the same time, given that fullbacks are, again, so important to, to the Ten Hag system, it was Tagliafico in 2018-19. It, it was shifted towards Daily Blind. Um he likes having fullbacks who are A, comfortable on the ball, B, have the ability to bring it forward and also can find that diagonal. Sure, and Tellers can't really do any of that. Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Sorry, man. He's going to get sold. Aaron Wan-Bissaka and Harry Maguire, £130 million worth of signings under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to be sold probably for in the region of 50 to 60 combined. If, well, I suppose that's if we're... No, actually, no, that's... Yeah. We're going to make a big loss on that. Both of those, both of those players were signed. Wambasaka showed real promise. I, I understand. Well, clearly, one of the best one-on-one -on -one tacklers in the game, but he just could not seem to establish himself going forward enough. Diogo Dalo improving defensively and also matching that by doing well um, going forward, which he's always done. It just forced Wambasaka out of the team, and I just don't see how Wambasaka comes back in the team if Eric Ten Hag comes in. You let me know what you think about that. You might disagree with that one. Phil Jones is a really, really easy one down here. Can we just end the Phil Jones saga? Just give him a wave, have a little handshake, and we move on. End the story. That doesn't need to be explained. Diogo Delo, I think he will be kept. I think he's got the sort of promise that's, that looks good at right back. I think he's shown qualities this season. He's still got a lot to improve on. Uh, Masrawi, one of the most important players uh, in, in the... Well, all of the Ajax players were important, but Masrawi was there in 2018-19 at right back. He was there in 2022 at right back. He's one of the players that's really played the whole way through for uh, Eric Ten Hag at Ajax. Uh, and look, I'm not saying Diogo Delo is going to be that sort of person, but I think he's got a chance. He has to improve for sure. But again, if we're looking at, we could probably do with the new fullbacks. We could probably do with new centre-backs. We could probably do with a whole new defence. Jeez. We thought we were one central midfielder away from challenging for the Premier League. You make me laugh. Nemanja Matic. Well, he's going to be kept this season because he will be. But if we're being completely honest, he's on the edge of Natchez. No, no. uh, I'm going to put Matic at the top simply because there's no one else there at the moment. Through lack of alternative, I'm putting Matic in the keep pile. But as soon as we get powerful central midfielders in, he'll be forced to be, not forced, but he'll go down the pecking order even further. And Matic should be leaving Manchester United within the space of two years. So sorry, I'm going to put him down on the that list there, on the edge, realistically. Unlike Fred, who's probably first, I'll be, he's one of the first players that's going to go on that keep list. 
like him or lump him, you can look at the deficiencies of Fred's game. This is one thing that Manchester United are lacking this season, last season, last six, seven years. It's the ability to actually commit for 90 minutes, play a full game. Don't think you can really say that about Fred. And I think he can improve. I think if you use him as a number eight, he'll play well. And inside that Ten Hag system, where is that? Is that the number 10? I don't think he'll play in that number 10 role. Does that mean he's going to be one of the two central midfielders? Yeah, maybe because they're not technically both of them holding midfielders. There's one that drops back and there's one that goes forward. Maybe that would suit Fred. But I definitely think that Fred is going to be on that, kept, that keep list. Now, Paul Popper. I don't think we need to waste our time having any sort of argument, debate, conversation. On you go. Paul Pop is getting sold. It's not even getting sold. Paul Pop is leaving Manchester United. End of story. And it will be a painful end to the story. Uh, a story that we hope was going to be filled with Champions Leagues. Filled with Premier League titles. Instead, I think partly Manchester United let him down in terms of not following it up with the ambition that he came back with. But also at the same time, I think he's let himself down overall. And I don't think that's being unfair to say that. Just end that conversation. Done. Paul Pop is leaving. Right? And even if Eric Ten Hag wants him, he'd be leaving anyway. But I don't think he does. Uh, but Tomane, again, I, don't, I know you're not going to like it, but I'm going to put him on the keep list. We need better midfielders than Scott McTominay. But until we've got better midfielders than Scott McTominay, McTominay will remain in this squad and will, will remain playing regular football for Manchester United. He's coming, on the, coming up to the age of 26 now. Still maintain that he can be a decent squad player, but he does get overexposed quite a lot of the time. So Manchester United simply need to boost our squad there and just make McTominay the squad player that he is. That's what I think anyway. Hannibal Medjby, he's absolutely getting kept. He's going to break through. He'll be one of the players that breaks through under Ten Hag if he comes in. A real technical player playing inside that number 10 role, the role that actually Donny van der Beek played for Ajax back in 2018-19. Hannibal's an exciting player. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he can do and breaking through into that first team. I think he will stay under Ten Hag and I'm excited to see what goes on there. Jesse Lingard, you can join the, the Paul Popper pile. A player that doesn't want to play at Manchester United anymore. A player that I don't want to play. I don't want playing for Manchester United if they don't want to. And a player that I don't think Eric Ten Hag will try in any way, shape or form to force to stay. He'll be leaving. Juan Mata, in my opinion, joins that sell list. And you can see right now that the sell and the on the edge lists are both longer than the keep list. Jeez, that's the way it goes at Manchester United right now. Juan Mata, great player, past his prime. I would rather give the minutes to someone like Hannibal Medjbury. Who, op who will operate in a similar sort of role to Juan Mata. So again, in that case, it's quite a simple scenario. I don't think that Eric Ten Hag would argue to keep Juan Mata either. Bruno Fernandes, well, we don't need to have a conversation about that. I know he might have some errors to his game and no doubt that he does. Bruno Fernandes is one of the best players we've had in a long, long time. He's one of the best players in the Premier League right now. Up there with the best. Sure, there's, there's certain things he's got around in his game and hopefully a coach like Eric Ten Hag can... Coach it to get the maximum out of him, to just, you know, polish the edges. That's what he needs. That's, that's the sort of player he is at the moment. He does need polishing, but I think he'll definitely, definitely keep it. I think he'll probably be captain. Now, Facundo Pellistri is an, in an interesting one. Realistically, we're probably going to put down there as a loan because, let's be honest, we don't know enough of him. But there's every chance that Pellistri, because he's broken through into the senior Uruguay squad, that he just forces his way, boom, straight up there, straight into the keep. Sorry, I'm going to keep Pellistri. As I said, he's broken through into that senior setup now with Uruguay, so maybe he's going to play there. You can let me know what you think about that. Tell you what, it's getting a bit busy down here now, so let me just pull this list across, and then I can see who's next. Right, let me just move my speaker out of the way, because my speaker's in the way. There we go. Right, next on the list, we have got Jaden Sancho. Again, you know that one. I don't need to tell you exactly what's going to happen there. It's Jaden Sancho. He's going to be kept. Of course Jaden Sancho is going to be kept. Jaden Sancho, I'm excited to see what he can do under Eric Ten Hag or Poch. But Ten Hag will be so excited about the idea of Sancho. Playing him probably off the left wing. So that's where Tadic plays at the moment. Um, who played out there before? I can't remember. It was um, Ziek was playing on the right-hand side at that point with Tadic up front. And I can't remember who played left wing. Uh, was it Neres? I think it might have been da David Neres uh, back in 2018-19. The wingers typically for um, Ten Hag's team. They can hold their width, but they do love cutting inside. Anthony loves cutting inside. Ziyech loved cutting inside. Sancho will thrive under him. And of course, Sancho is going to be kept. Edinson Cavani, 
well, just a, another one of those players. Just end the conversation, really. Uh, Cavani, lovely hair. Lovely bloke when he plays. Hardly ever plays. Cavani's leaving. He'll, so many of these players aren't really going to get sold anyway. Uh, Mason Greenwood, I'm not going to mention. I'm just going to leave it down there. And it's just going to be a, a question mark until we've got some clarity on it. And that's all I want to say about that subject. Anthony Alanga, uh, he'll be a player that I think Eric Ten Hag will be, will be very excited to manage. Eric Ten Hag knows what academy players mean. He knows, uh, he knows how to bring young players into the senior setup and to let them shine. He's done it so many times at Ajax, and it's the Ajax way, sort of like embedded in their veins, right? Anthony Langer's broken through to the first team after an impressive preseason. I think Langer would definitely have a spot in that squad next year. Marcus Rashford. I'm sorry to say, I know that he's probably got a future at Manchester. He's most definitely got a future at Manchester United, but right now, I think it's only fair for us to say that Marcus Rashford's on the edge. And when I say Marcus Rashford's on the edge, it means that Marcus, you've just... Buck up your ideas, man. As soon as you buck your ideas up, you're going nowhere. Every United fan wants you to stay and start banging in goals left, right and centre. Manchester born, scoring for United. It's great. But he's lost his way this year and he has to refine that. All right? So I'm going to put Rashford on the, on the edge list. I mean, a lot of these are probably going to be kept anyway. But as I said, on the edge, I don't think it's guaranteed that Rashford stays. And now, Cristiano Ronaldo. Where are you putting Cristiano Ronaldo? Are you putting Cristiano Ronaldo on the sell list? Are you putting him on the, on the edge? Or do you say, no, nah, Ronaldo's definitely staying at Manchester United. I've got to put Ronaldo on the edge. I'd explain exactly why. Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Um, Eric Ten Hag will be very excited to manage, to manage Cristiano Ronaldo, the greatest goal scorer of all time. But there's no hiding the fact that it will be a little bit of a... Um, uh, compromise to try and fit the system around Ronaldo. Now, some of you will come to me and say, Sam, look, Sebastian Haller's done okay at Ajax this year. He's not got that much pace. He's a bit of a target man. And I'll be like, that's correct. That's why I'm putting him on the edge. I'm not, Ronaldo's going to be here next season, in my opinion. I don't think not having no Champions League will make him leave. But I'll be very interested to see how Ten Hag uses him. I really will. That's why I'm putting it on the edge. And as I said, this is if I'm basing this over the period of a couple of years, then Ronaldo is on the edge. We're not going to be seeing him for that long. Andreas Pereira, Toodle Pip, my friend. You can join that burgeoning sell list at the bottom there. End of story, man. I don't know why we didn't sell him to Flamengo when they came in with like a £10 million offer anyway, but Pereira's got no future at Manchester United. We all know that, and he knows it as well. Ahmad. Now, Ahmad's an interesting one. In my opinion, I think Ahmad goes straight up there onto the keep list. I think he will hopefully get minutes under Eric Ten Hag, but at the same time, you know, he's hard, I don't, he, don't think he started a game for like two months for Rangers. You know, physically, he is clearly lacking. SPL, I think, is probably more physical than the Premier League because they're making up for their lack of technical quality, but just pure brawn. So it is very physical. And I'm a little bit worried, but we pay 40 million for him, man. It's not as if we sign someone for five million and loan them out. Very expensive player for his age. I want to see him come to the squad, kept and grown. And I think Ten Hag would be a great manager for doing that. Now, Donny van der Beek. I think we all know what's going to happen there. And he will be kept at Manchester United. Whether you think that Donny van der Beek is as good a player as some fans let on, it's your opinion. But Donny van der Beek was a crucial player for Eric Ten Hag in 2018-2019. That, that campaign that had De Ligt, van der Beek and De Jong. The three mainstays of it. Obviously, loads of other good players too. But Donny was great in that number 10 role. And if Ten Hag comes in, he will be rubbing his hands together. And maybe you'll see, a cliche, but it really might feel like a new signing with Donny van der Beek. Don't know whether or not he's going to stay or not, but I'm going to put him down the keep list for now. Now, James Garner, I'm definitely 100% putting him in the keep list. We have, as I said, same concept I'm putting McTominay up there because we don't have many midfielders at the moment. James Garner will get an opportunity in preseason if Ten Hag comes in. I like to think that he'll take that and I think he's done very well at Nottingham Forest and I'm looking forward to seeing what he could do. In the same way that Ilanga broke through after a great preseason and Palistri really excited and then has now broken through into the first team setup with Uruguay. I hope that James Garner can come in and break through into the first team setup at Manchester United. That'll be exciting. Now, next on the list, we've got Anthony Martial. And I think it's quite simple. I think Martial joins the list down there at the bottom. I think Martial will be sold 
by Eric Ten Hag. I don't see Martial having a future at Manchester United. It is as simple as that. It's just another one of those players we look at and go, what could have been? And it definitely is a what could have been with Martial because 2019, he was still he was scoring 22, 23 goals, but his form disappeared. He disappeared the year after. He's never recovered. Just don't see a future for him at Manchester United anymore. Ethan Laird. Now, if we're talking about Masrawi, we're talking about actual progressive right backs. Ethan Laird's got a real chance of impressing and shining under Eric Ten Hag. Went, uh, I think it went online to Swansea in the championship, did really well there. Then Man United switched the loan move to Bournemouth, and I don't think he's playing that much at Bournemouth by comparison. Ethan Laird's really progressed, though. And again, I think if you're looking at Ten Hag and younger players, Ethan Laird is one that he will be excited about seeing. But I'm going to put him on the keep list. Shola Shoratire, I'm going to put him down there on the loan list. On there, on his own, on the loan list. I don't particularly think that um, there's going to be room inside the first team set up for Shola yet. Of all the players that broke through when he got his debut, he was the one that look, I looked at and went, it looks like he needs a loan. I think a loan is a good move for Shola next year, and then we can have a conversation about him the year after. Simple as that. He's still young. He's got his whole career ahead of him. I don't think it's a bad thing to have a loan move there. Uh, Brandon Williams. I'm not really sure what to do with Brandon Williams, if I'm being completely honest. Gone out on loan at Norwich. He's done pretty well there. Uh, I don't know. I really, really don't know. I'm a bit torn on that one. He won't. I don't think he'll accept another loan spell. Let's just put him on the edge. All right. Brandon Williams on the edge. I'm not really sure what's going to go on with him this year. Doesn't strike me as he's going to come straight in and go into that first team setup, but maybe Brandon Williams would join the preseason tour and he'll get given an opportunity in the same way that James Garner would. So let's see about that. But I'm, I'm a bit unsure about him. Axel Twanzebe. It hurts me to do this, but I think I'm going to put him down on the sell list. Once upon a time, there was an opportunity for Axel Twanzebe in Manchester United's senior setup, and I think he was ready to take it. And then he got injured. Really, really badly timed injury for him. Took his opportunity away from him. Was never able to get it back. Since gone out on loan, hasn't really been shining on loan. I'm not even sure he's been playing out on loan. Just don't think he's got a future at Manchester United now, if I'm being completely honest. Right, that's, that's what I think. Uh, Ted and Mengi. I'd probably put him down here on the keep list. Either on the keep list or the loan list. I don't think, mate, he's gone on loan to Birmingham City, I think, this year. Let's see what goes on. I think Ted and is a bit of a confusing one like Brandon Williams. I don't know how far on the edge and how close and whether he needs another loan spell or not. Or whether he might be... Yeah, a bit confused about Mengi and Williams, but I'm going to put Mengi inside that keep part. And I suppose it all depends on what happens in preseason. And Chong? I think Chong will probably go on that in the same way. If we're looking at Ethan Laird, James Garner, Ted and Mengi, Chong and Sodic, it'll be unfair not to put Williams on that list as well. Five players there who would probably join in Manchester United's preseason if Eric Tan Ten Hag came in. You wouldn't know whether they were going to be kept or sold. So I suppose in that sense, they're all on the edge. Because you don't know whether they're going to get kept or sold. It all depends on what they do in preseason. So sorry, I'm going to put them all on that list instead. Ethan Laird and James Garner. If they all impress in preseason, they'll all jump up onto that keep list. But if they don't do that well, then maybe they will be sold by Manchester United or simply loaned out. So that, let me run through this full list with you now. Okay, I'll go full screen so you can see it. Let me make it nice and big. That one there. So we have got Bruno Fernandes, Fred. Dean Henderson, Varane, Delo, McTominay, Hannibal, Pellistri, Sancho, Ilanga, Van der Beek, and Ahmad on the keep list. On the edge, I've gone for Bay, De Gea, Heaton, Shaw, Tellez, Lindelof, Matic, Rashford, Garner, Chong, Laird, Mengi, Williams, and Ronaldo. Now, you might disagree with Ronaldo, but that's what you can... You can let me know in the comments, as I'm sure you will. Um, and on the sell list, I've got... Axel Twenzebe, I've got Anthony Martial, Lingard, Pogba, Lee Grant, what is he? Um, Harry Maguire, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Phil Jones, Wan Mata, Cavani, and Pereira with Shada Shoratire down there on the loan list. What do you think about that, eh? That is my keep or sell. As I said, you might disagree with plenty of that, but that's the beauty of these tier lists. It's all about opinions, eh? And like assholes, everybody's got one. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But for me, off the top of my dome, looking at the squad, that's what my gut is telling me about the players that will be kept at Manchester United. If Ten Hag comes in, the players will be on the edge. They might stay at Manchester United, but I think they've got to work for their future. And the players I think he would sell. You let me know what you think in the comments below. 
As I said, it was a video that so many of you requested. So, hey, here you go. I've done it. So please, if you did enjoy the video, drop a like it on it and subscribe to United People's TV. Take it easy.